Hi, my name is Lizzie, and I'm going to show you today how you can use knowledge graphs to help with data harmonization and cleansing tasks. I hope I won't make you too hungry by using chocolate as my demo data. You heard me right, chocolate. So let's imagine we work for a fictitious company that aggregates data about different kinds of chocolate products, such as chocolate bars and assorted candy boxes. We get our data from different product data providers that all use different attributes when describing a product. For example, the flavor of a certain chocolate bar could be called milk and hazelnut by the manufacturer. Our data providers might categorize them differently though. For instance, one of them might drop milk in the description of the attribute, or check out how the unit count is represented differently for the exact same product. There are also attributes that some of our data providers do not provide while others do. It gets worse though. The data providers also often use different descriptions, so we cannot rely on the input data assays for determining whether they're duplicate items in a catalog. Our goal is to create a clean product catalog with standardized product attributes and without any duplicate items. We also need to do all of this without leaving the Snowflake data cloud. Let me show you how I would approach this problem. Over the course of the next few minutes, we're going to do a couple of cool things. So let's start with the basics. We have our data in Snowflake, and we're going to use Relation AI's native app on top of Snowpark Container Services to create a knowledge graph, then harmonize the attributes of a chocolate product, and then finally identify duplicates in our product master so that we can create a clean product catalog without any duplicates. Along the way, you'll learn how to apply different graph algorithms that are very useful when trying to tackle these types of problems. So let's jump to the code and do some magic. I'm using a Jupyter Notebook for the purpose of this demo. I could have also used VS Code or the new notebooks that have recently been released in SnowSight. We start by importing the Python libraries that we will need, including the Relation AI Python package. This package is a declarative query builder that lets you model relationships between entities in your data cloud and extract valuable insights. Next, we connect the model to the data source in Snowflake and tell the Relation AI package that we want to use the data from the harmonization dataset table. The rows in this table represent product items coming from all different sources that we have. Columns represent the attributes of the items, such as brand, the pack size, flavor, etc. We then continue by creating some types. You can think of types as representing real-world entities. There are a couple of types relevant for a use case. I defined one called draw item to refer to items that we get as input, and a type item to refer to deduplicated cleaned records. Similarly, I declare both the raw attribute and the attribute types. So let me run a small query to take a look at my data in Snowflake. Next, I want to use this data to populate the data model with actual instances. I do this by writing rules using the Relation AI Query Builder syntax that describe what raw items and raw attributes are, as well as the relationships between them. As you remember from earlier, one issue we're facing is that not all the data providers share the same set of attributes. We cannot invent these values, but we can infer them in certain cases, especially when there's a hierarchical relationship between two attributes. If one of our data providers only provides the sub-brand attribute, then I can infer the brand of that item from the other items that have the same sub-brand, which were provided from my other sources. The three items that had some missing attributes around sub-brand and sub-category. Using this approach, we managed to derive values for all of them. We can visualize the data as a graph, where both items and their row attributes represent the nodes in the graph. The mappings from items to the attributes form the edges. As you can see though, visualizations such as this one won't help us much in detecting duplicates, nor with our attribute harmonization task. So let's get back to our problem. Let's find out if our data contains duplicate items which we need to clean up. The most obvious sign of a potential duplicate would be a fully matching description between items. And indeed, we found some. So let me pick one of these descriptions and then create a visualization where we filter a graph to only display items with this description and all the related attributes. We color the nodes representing different attribute types differently. This picture confirms our suspicion, which is that these items, while having exactly the same description, do not have all of the other attributes matching fully. They come from different sources and are quite similar, but still not the same. We want to harmonize our attributes before we can proceed with automatically detecting complete duplicates among the items. As we need to compare and detect similarity between strings, a very useful metric is the Levenstein distance and it is available for us to use easily in the Relation AI package. Having identified connected pairs of attribute values, we understand that there are groups of attribute values where all of them are aliases to a single attribute. Now, to define such groups, we can simply use another tool that Relation AI conveniently provides for us, 
a graph algorithm called weakly connected components, one of the many built-in graph analytic functions that you can find in the Relation AI package. With the help of this algorithm, we group all the raw attributes that we deem to be similar in values. We can then create an instance of an attribute for each group. The raw attributes that belong to the group are aliases of the attribute. We can now validate the grouping of the raw attributes by visualizing them. Check out how well we managed to identify some of these similar raw attribute values. Now that we have derived the final attributes, we also need to make sure to populate their type and the value properties. We make sure that the type of the attribute is inherited from its alias raw attributes. As for the actual value of the attribute, I made the choice of using the most frequently used values among the raw attributes of the group. So let's get back to a visualization from earlier where we compared two items with a matching description and include the final attributes as nodes. You can see how we successfully resolved the manufacturer and the brand to the same entity. However, looking closely at these two items, it turns out that they should really not be considered the same because the flavor attribute is actually different for them. All right, so matching description between two items does not mean that they are identical. Now that we have a nice clean set of attributes assigned to our items, we could compare how similar two items are based on the final attributes that they map to. Luckily for us, this is a very simple task as Relation AI provides a number of similarity algorithms. I'm going to use the Jacquard similarity here. This function compares two given items. The higher the resulting score, the more alike they are. We are looking for identical items, so let's focus only on pairs of items that match at over 99%. And given our experience from earlier, this indeed did the trick. That wasn't too hard, right? Let's visualize these two items and the matching attributes to confirm. As you can see, all attributes are matching between these two items, either because the raw attribute values matched or whether raw attribute values were different, they were simply an alias for the same actual attribute. For a product catalog, we only need one of these two items. Let's use the same technique that we used earlier to create final attributes out of multiple raw attributes, namely applying the weakly connected components algorithm. As you can guess, we again managed to identify clusters and now can create new item entities, one for each cluster, thereby deduplicating identical row items. To wrap up our demo, we run one final query to illustrate the results of the harmonization work we've done. From the 190 row items, we are left with only 155 truly unique items, and the 149 different row attributes were cleaned up to get only 66 final unique ones. The only thing left to do now is to provide a convenient way to run this analysis and get the data harmonization results from Snowflake without access to this notebook. An easy way of doing that is creating a stored procedure, which can be called from Snowflake and configured to run per periodically as your data gets updated. Thanks for watching, and I'm looking forward to see what kind of applications you're going to build using Relational AI on top of Snowflake Snowpark Container Services.